Jackson. Check, check. Holy Spirit. Whoosh. Whoosh. I feel like I'm getting lower, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> One more. <laughs> the girl went to West Point in the military academy. <laughs> Got a four point all the way through high school. <laughs> And her younger brother got a two point <laughs> and graduated high school. <laughs> Barely. And today he just he just got kicked out of he just got kicked out of flight school. Community college and top grades was an F minus. <laughs> he got kicked out and he moved back in with his parents and he has screaming fights with his mom and dad. <laughs> Some of you this story might sound familiar. <laughs> oh glory. <laughs> oh. 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 They ran away from home. The parents ran away from home with them with the boy screaming at them from the driveway. And he went in and he hated himself so much that he took a syringe and was father paramedics medical splice and he filled it up with Lysol from underneath his parents' sink. You know the public, you know the cleaning the cleaning fluid, Lysol. <laughs> and he proceeded to inject it into this vein. In fact, it was in this vein. In fact, it was in this exact vein. <laughs> And he died. Uh, wow. 31 years ago tomorrow morning. Wow. Wow. 2 a.m. Wow. Uh, 5 a.m. Here's one. <laughs> we guys have drunk parties really early in the morning. I mean, 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. and you're already drunk. I'm like, this, I like this place. <laughs> I have so many friends around here. <laughs> I don't know where, I don't know where your wife went. <laughs> She's no longer here. <laughs> This is some kind of an angel or something that came back. <laughs> Joshua and Julie from South America. I told all, I told all about you guys. <laughs> I told all about you guys what we did. <laughs> I'm preaching around the world. <laughs> I still remember the day I asked her, what's she doing out in the car? I was like, why don't you just come in and have the good stuff? <laughs> Did you know? Did you know? If you put a bunch of gemstones in this crystal thing right here and start twirling that thing around it, the gemstones will sing and they'll dance. It's true. It's true. I mean, they sing and they dance. Oh. I don't follow this trick. Oh, Jacob, who are we making? He's probably on the floor somewhere. He came out to our Whoa! meeting. And he preached from his face. <laughs> his face hit the carpet. And his butt up was up in the air. <laughs> and he preached like that the whole service. <laughs> the whole service. <laughs> Carl. Saw the 
Mississippi Squirrel by Grace Stevens. Yeah! <laughs> but if you haven't seen the Mississippi Squirrel, you need to go look on YouTube and just look up the Mississippi Squirrel. <laughs> because Carl, Carl is the man who had the Mississippi Squirrel. He was the boy. <laughs> he was the boy. <laughs> I've got proof. <laughs> Grace Stevens was singing about him, even though he wasn't yet, I don't think he was born yet. But. <laughs> well, you're only, what, 23, 24? 23. Yeah, see? <laughs> Couldn't have been born yet. <laughs> but, you need to be drunk. <laughs> don't stop. <laughs> hey! God wants you to get used to the Spirit of God. The doors of heaven have been made open. And if you haven't been there yet, you ought to go. <laughs> because God will send a PhD student who next year you'll have to call doctor. <laughs> and finance, thank you, to tell you that heaven has already been made open and you can go there anytime you want to. And it's in the Bible. <laughs> $5,000. Oh, 
Well, I can send you from somebody from Sri Lanka to hand send you if they hand you five thousand dollars. I didn't even know if I'd ever heard of Sri Lanka before I heard of Kirby. God does not care about your money or how much money you've got. God can do what he wants, when he wants, how he wants, with who he wants. And there is nothing that is going to stop me. This young boy drove his family home and then he committed suicide. And he looked at himself laying down on the living room floor. And he thought to himself, good, it's finally over. I don't have to deal with any of this anymore. And the next thing he knew, he was in Our Lady of Laura's Catholic Church, a block away from where I grew up. I was in a funeral service. And I met my father, who was a paramedic. Now, anybody, anybody here ever work in emergency medicine? You two should have your hands up. You're from South America. Everybody down there is working in emergency medicine. <laughs> Do you ever work in emergency medicine? If you ask anybody who works in emergency medicine, there's one thing you cannot be. Emotional. You have to not be emotional whatsoever. You're allowed the oh shit minute. Pardon the term. You don't like it too bad. <laughs> I'm not religious, I'm not going to start now. I've been serving Jesus for 31 years, and I've never been religious, I'm not going to start now, so get over yourself. Um, and get over me too, if you want to. My <laughs> Granny Clark approves. <laughs> My father, who never cried or laughed to that day, was sitting in the very front row, and he was bawling his eyes out. And he's saying, my son, my son. And I looked at my sister who was next to him. My mom had her arm around him. My dead sister, eight years old, who's Debbie, was sitting over here. My sister, Mary Ellen, was on the other side. My grandparents on both sides were there. Ones were still alive. And I looked at where Debbie was looking. My eldest sister, she was just shaking her head saying, no. Mm -mm, no. Mm -mm, no. As if she didn't want to believe something, and I looked up to what I was in the front. There was a casket. Anybody who grew up Catholic knows if you commit suicide, you don't get your funeral in the, in the Catholic Church. Unless, of course, your money gave the money to build the church, in which case you can have whatever you want. My, my family gave the money to build that church, <laughs> as did my grandfather. So I got the funeral. <laughs> and I walked up to the casket. And I was in the casket. And I backed away, freaking out, not knowing what I'd done, not realizing I just killed myself. Backing away, touching my chest, saying, I'm not dead, I'm alive, I'm fine, I'm not dead, someone's playing a joke on me. And I looked in panic around the church and saw a few of my family friends, a few of the people from the church, and a few of the kids from the youth group that had always witnessed to me, even though I told them they were all crazy to do this Jesus stuff. I was right about that part. <laughs> you guys are crazy to do this Jesus stuff. <laughs> and don't ever lose that. <laughs> don't give it up. Don't let them stop you for a second. You have to go to South America. <laughs> That's Central America. They'll, they'll let you worship down there. You can do it with the drug lords. They'll join in. <laughs> if not, just ask Joshua Julie. Uh, <laughs> they're the ones that defend them when they go down. Uh, <laughs> I looked around the front at the church and I saw a few of the kids from the Wednesday night group, the youth group. One young man was named Brian Grego, and I walked up and I got this close to him and I said, Brian, I'm scared. What's happening? And he ignored me. So I yelled at the top of my lungs, Brian, I'm scared. What's happening? And he continued to ignore me. And if anybody knows anything about Catholics, if you are one of the youth and you yell in the middle of service, you're going to get this from seven different directions. <laughs> Nobody did that. So I said, fine, be rude. And I sat down in the pew in front of me.
Yeah. Yeah. Thursday too?
was going on, he said, Glenn, sit down. So I sat down on the couch right next to him, and he said, Glenn, on Sunday, I was going to go to Lord's like I always do. We call the Lady of Lord's Lord's, for short. He said, I decided I'd rather sleep in while Glenn and I slept in, I had a dream. And in my dream, Glenn, I went to your funeral. And I turned to him and I said, Brian, that was no funeral. Because when I was there, I looked at you and I said, it's a Wednesday night group still going. Can I, and can I come? And thighs as big as golf ball sitting on that couch. He looks at me and says, you just got born again. And we quoted a verbatim. Word for word. Exactly what God had done and where people were, what they were wearing, what was shown, what was said. Everything was exactly the same. And to this day, I won't tell you why God does the things the way he does them, but he does them the way he does them because they work. <laughs> and I thank God that he knows how to make things work <laughs> and how to rescue me out of the pit of hell <laughs> and set me back <laughs> with a relationship with him because today I know him as my Lord and Savior and he lives right here in my heart. And for 21 years, 21 years this year, 21 years I ministered Jesus Christ and the ministry was perfect. I knew when people would laugh when I said, my grandfather's name, Glenn Miller. No, not that one. But I knew that would always elicit a laugh. Which is really funny because we have an adopted uncle while all of my name, like, named George Scudder, whose grandfather is George Burns. Not that one. <laughs> I had laughed so hard when I went through Ancestry.com and looked him up and found out his father, his grandfather was George Burns, and it wasn't that one. <laughs> well, I had, the ministry was perfect. It was just how I wanted it. Exactly how it would work, and I would travel all over the world sharing the testimony. And then God, God just totally messed it up. <laughs> Pray God messes up your ministry if you got one. Because <laughs> you don't want one. <laughs> They're his. <laughs> we don't want them. He needs them. <laughs> They're his. <laughs> Let him have the glory. <laughs> he gets all the glory. <laughs> Ten years ago next month, last Wednesday of next month, something unusual happened. I just gone to I just had a dream about three weeks before that. About a month from now I had a dream. And it was real you know those life changing dreams you have sometimes? You know those ones that just totally shatter your whole, whole everything about you and they change your whole life? I had one of those dreams. You want to hear the dream? My spiritual parents moved. The end. <laughs> that was the whole dream. So I called them up and I said, Tom, Deborah, what's going on? I just had a dream that you moved. And they, they said, well, did you know we just moved from one side of the state to the other? It was about, I don't know, a six hour drive. I said, no, but I'm gonna be over on that side of the state next week. They said, you're coming over here? I said, yes. They said, what for? And I said, I'm sharing my testimony. They said, where? And I said, Calvary Chapel. They were like, you're going to Calvary Chapel to share your testimony? Because <laughs> Calvary Chapel out in Idaho is famous for one thing, believing everything, practicing nothing. <laughs> you can raise your hands, just don't do it in church. <laughs> you can pray in tongues, just don't do it in church. Yeah. <laughs> you can sing, dance, and shout hallelujah, just don't do it in church. Where else are you supposed to do it? <laughs> and I thought we were in the church. Anyway, so I went over there and shared. There was a born again, spirit filled man of God who was told, Go take that church. And he said, God, I'll go to Africa. <laughs> and God said, No, you'll go to Idaho. <laughs> So he called us up and said, Glenn, we just come and share your testimony and pray for the people. Well, 
They'll all run away when you do, but do it anyway. <laughs> that church has been radically transformed, let me tell you. <laughs> and oh my word. <laughs> when they met me for dinner, they couldn't go to the church with me, but because they were going to another place to speak, but when they met me for dinner after church, they brought a man with them. His name was Jerry. No, Terry. His name was Terry. Terry and Jerry. Man and wife, Terry and Jerry. Copper. That's it, Terry Copper. Terry was getting ready to go to work one day. And he was born again, spirit full Christian. And he saw an angel fly to the back of his house. So just like any of you, absolutely, absolutely normal, I know exactly what you do. He thought to himself, I'm going to catch myself an angel. <laughs> <laughs> so, my car would have had a cage. <laughs> Go to its house to find its crew. <laughs> so I was a bit squirrel, sorry. Okay. <laughs> so we went to... Uh, his house, because he invited us over to his house, and we saw the gemstones that got caught. Because he snuck to the back of his house, and there was no angel there. But he was praising God because he knew he saw one. And all of a sudden, he felt a presence behind him. And he turns around, here's this eight foot tall angel looking down at him. You're going to catch yourself an angel, huh? <laughs> No. <laughs> and the angel said, hold out your hand. And he held out his hand. And he placed a gemstone into his hand. By the time we, we met him, he had 38 of them. and totally got 40. 40 perfect gemstones. 40, 50 carat gemstones. That was like 500. <laughs> I was I was having a massage last night. I was teach I was teaching this young massage therapist. See, this young massage therapist had a brother. Has a brother. Brother is an artist. And his, he used to hate his paintings. And he was very frustrated over the fact that his brother would throw away his paintings. And I was teaching him how this massage therapist has a painting too. It's every one of your bodies. Because as he's working with massage, God's speaking to him through his hands. And we are the canvas. Well, we are the canvas that God's painting. We are the canvas that God is painting. You are the canvas that God is painting. You are the canvas that God is painting. And we miss the little things. We miss these little things. The little things that happen all around us all the time, we miss them. I went home, having met, had met this man, and I went back to study because I was a student. I've been a student for the last 14 years. <laughs> In 2002, I returned to school to get my accounting degree, two year, two year accounting degree. <laughs> By December or February, I should be Dr. Glenn T. Smith. That's the F minus student that got kicked out of community college. <laughs> it's going to be Dr. Glenn Smith. <laughs> Having written his, his dissertation about finance. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> if you can't hear the miracle on that, there's nothing very wrong with it. <laughs> we miss the things that God's doing most of the time. 
I went back to going to, going to school and knowing God as usual. usual. <laughs> if we'll admit it too often, that's exactly what we're doing. <laughs> we have our life, so we ignore God as usual. And I was ignoring God as usual. <laughs> One day goes by, I hadn't spent five minutes taking him for the miracles that he, he allowed me to see. <laughs> Gemstones from heaven! <laughs> that actually appeared from heaven, brought by angels. There's one of them. <laughs> that's an angel right there. <laughs> I'll tell you that story later. <laughs> Tuesday goes by. I haven't spent five minutes in the Word looking up gemstones to see if they were in the Bible. They are. And not only that, but it talks about you when it talks about gemstones. Did you know that? Right where it talks about gemstones, it talks about you. Wow. Right where it talks about gemstones, it talks about you. It talks about you. <laughs> Wednesday goes by, I haven't spent five minutes asking God if he'd do it for me. Seven o'clock exactly on the numbers, I'm sitting there with a laptop computer in my lap. Watching TV. And my front door opens up. And Jesus walks in. <laughs> and walks right past me. And walks in the dining room and disappears. I turned the TV off and knocked the remote control on the floor and I think the batteries fell out. <laughs> Hit it, God. Oh, we missed a little bit. speak and I yell, Terry! And she's in the kitchen and she yells, what? <laughs> and I, after about two more minutes I can speak again, I yell, Terry! And she walks in. And if she was here, she would tell you she felt the most peace that she'd ever felt in that living room. She didn't see Jesus, but she felt that peace. And it, it was so strong, you don't want to breathe. You don't want to move. <laughs> It was just, whoa, <laughs> indescribable, just, just, she's been saying what it was this whole time. <laughs> wow, so wonderful! Thank you. <laughs> and she looks down, and she picks up this little tumbled amethyst, and she looks at me, and she says, yeah, right, Glenn. <laughs> I look at her in complete confidence and absolute faith, and I say, yeah, right, Terry. <laughs> Jesus just walked past me, left a gemstone in his wake, and I thought my wife did it. <laughs> How in the world does the guy even think that? <laughs> I thought it. <laughs> I thought she did it. I went to my pastor and I said, what do I do? He says, don't tell anybody. I said, what? He says, trust me, don't tell anybody. I'm like, for how long? He said, six months. I'm like, but you tell Jesus, everybody about Jesus at the drop of a hat. He says, yes, I do. And, and I said, but you told him not to tell anybody. He says, yes, I am. I'm like, okay, well, I've trusted you my whole life. I guess I'll trust you now. So I trusted him and didn't tell anybody. Four months go by, we received. Somebody pick up one of those white plastic containers in the back table back there, who's in that other room. <laughs> hand it up this way. <laughs> hand it up this way, just let people look at it. We were getting 
all these gemstones. Oh, wow. <laughs> I know. And we've been getting really, really big, really, really big gemstones. Really, really big gemstones. Wow. Really, really big gemstones. Wow. <laughs> really, really big gemstones, we thought. <laughs> and one day I'm laying in bed, and God is apparently wanting to do something for me. And I get up out of bed and walk in the next room. Nobody else has a key to our house. Nobody's visiting our house. We have no pets. Nobody has a key to our house, nothing. And I walk, I talk to my wife in the next room, and I walk back, and laying on my bed is a 315-carat color change garment. Oh, yeah, and I walk back into the room like this. I win. You lose. I'm God's favorite. Because <laughs> I got a really big gemstone. <laughs>
to a lot of people. <laughs> Remember, I've been doing ministry for 20 years now, so... <laughs> I've been flowing to the Holy Spirit for 20 years. <laughs> I got born into a group that was as crazy as everybody here. <laughs> we used to do this as just a regular worship service. <laughs> That's what I got born again into, so... <laughs> See, I went to Toronto, Toronto Airport Christian Fellowship as a complete skeptic. See, I, I didn't... It, oh, it yes. wasn't that I didn't believe God wouldn't do laughter. It wasn't that I didn't believe God wouldn't do all the miracles. I just didn't God, think God would do it in a big church. <laughs> I was used to groups like this. <laughs> right here. <laughs> and so... <laughs> what did I find out different? <laughs> Walking that place and... First I saw the intercessors, which I told God I wanted to see, and then I told God I wanted a certain scripture read. I got in, forgot, first got set up, said I don't want to read a scripture, turned to that, fell off the chair, and I was there for the rest of the night. But... <laughs> <laughs> that was long before the gemstones ever came. <laughs> so I prayed for two people that night. God said to me, good job, Glenn, you did exactly what I said. Now, more, more, more. what do you mean now? <laughs> He said, now give as many as they want to everybody who wants them. More, more, more. <laughs> but God, they're mine. But <laughs> so I was, I was obedient. <laughs> and I gave them all away. I had maybe four or five in the very top, bottom plastic part on this corner of that bay. The thing was full when I walked in and almost nearly empty when I left. And I went home, and I was pouting, and I was suffering back in the jacuzzi in my backyard. <laughs> you know how you suffer that way sometimes for Jesus. <laughs> Thank God God suffers us, huh? And Terry says, the bag of gemstones is, gemstones is on your table. I'm like, it's on the table? Because she didn't know I'd given them all away. <laughs> and she, I said, she said, yeah, they're on the table. I was like, okay. And I walked in, looked at the table, here's the bag full of gemstones wow. sitting on the table. I knew I'd stuffed them in my shirt, so I looked at my shirt. And there was a bag full of gemstones in my shirt. And I went back to the container that I took them out of, and the container was full Whoa. of gemstones. Oh, so I'm praying your bunk is going to be filled up by the time we're leaving. <laughs> Nothing impossible for God. Everyone, you look for your claws in the bucket. You just believe for 10,000 times more than what's in this bucket. Jesus name. Jacob and I alone, with all the gemstones we've had, just when we're together, would be able to fill up that bucket. <laughs> Is that not true, Jacob? I've seen over 3,000 shows. Yeah. <laughs> The big ones and the little ones and everything else that have showed up, we could fill up that bucket easy. So we had over three thousand <laughs> showed up my house. Amen. Okay. Oh, my oh, house oh, three thousand oh, oh, showed up. <laughs> <laughs> New Year's Eve. And God's gonna do more than that. God is gonna do more than that. Praise God. <laughs> but you know, God doesn't work. God. God doesn't work work with people unless they're absolutely perfect, right? <laughs> God doesn't work with people unless they're absolutely perfect, right? <laughs> God only works with perfect people, right? <laughs> Andrew, isn't that right? God only works with perfect people, right? I start going to these meetings in California and Indiana and, and uh, Illinois and Oregon and California and Washington and gems start coming to all these different meetings. Arizona, it's phenomenal. And I've watched people, how many people have found the gemstones so far today? Or even this, since yesterday? <laughs> It's awesome, isn't it? Got get <laughs> And many, many people were finding gemstones. But a few people were walking out like this. 
and I was confusing me. And yeah, sometimes they jump and they bump heads just to grab the things that were that were falling. And I was like, what in the world is going on with these people? And <laughs> they were literally diving for them. And then one day, this one young man was being held by his dad in the back of church in Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> He was crying. And I went up and said, what's going on? Maybe I could do something, you know? I figured I could help some way. And Dad said, well, yesterday I came and found a bunch of gemstones. So today I told my son he could come with me and he'd fight gemstones. And he saw a bunch of them fall because he could never get to any. Oh, well, heck. <laughs> I got my MBA with an emphasis in accounting. Thank you. <laughs> I got my Bachelor of Science. Bachelor of Science, not art, science. In accounting. <laughs> I studied for my PhD. <laughs> I knew what to do. I'm not stupid. I'm not dumb. I know what to do. I mean, for crying out loud, it's not difficult to say. There's a gemstone there. Look. <laughs> I'm standing here before you. <laughs> Guilty as charged. <laughs> I put them out there for some people to find. Oh, more, more. <laughs> a couple of my friends got to me and said, Brian, you uh, shouldn't be doing this. Especially when God's doing something so holy that we've witnessed what God has been doing. Wow! And I had to go back to my pastor and say, Pastor, what's going on? And this is, I needed to come over and talk to you. He said, well, come over. And he brought me over brought me back to his office. He didn't tell me he'd already had 30 phone calls. <laughs> he just said, what's going on, Glenn? I said, well, I did this. And he said, well, that wasn't very smart, was it? I said, no, he said, well, so where did they all come from? I said, they showed up at the house. I just, those ones that, 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 that I collected, I gave out. We, I stood there with one pastor with a bunch of kids there and took them out and just tossed them out for the kids to find so that they could find it. <laughs> Perfectly innocent. <laughs> Perfectly stupid. <sighs> he said, well, Glenn, that's okay. You're out of ministry for a year. I heard you're out of ministry, period. And for 2008, I stayed out of ministry completely. And in 2009, he said, you can go back into ministry, but everywhere you go, you take Terry with you. Which is why it was such a surprise to Andrew when <laughs> Terry wasn't here. 2010, you said, you can go out without Terry. <laughs> this trip, he said, you can go out without Terry. And so, <sighs> praise God. And 2009 goes by, 2010 goes by, and then ministry, 2011 goes by in September, my birthday weekend, this weekend, my spiritual birthday weekend, I'm born again tomorrow, my physical birthday is in February, <laughs> this weekend I got born again, this weekend I killed myself, <laughs> and went to hell, and came home, came back. <laughs> Except that Jesus crying out to God. <laughs> Trust me, I will never be the same. <laughs> and yet still I'm in the mistake. In 2011, God sits me down. He wants to have a talk with me. I'm like, okay. He says, why aren't you sharing what happened? I was like, what do you mean why am I not sharing what happened? He said, why aren't you sharing how you failed? And I said, because the throw me out of place and think I'm a complete fraud and just a hundred thousand reasons not to? And he says, Whoa! well, I'll give you one, two. I said so. <laughs> and he told me, share what you did. And I was like, okay. The very, very, very next meeting, I was before 700 people. And he said, share Whoa! what happened. And so I did. I shared everything I did. He said, then, he said, Glenn, have them close your eyes. Everybody here, close your eyes. Everybody here, bow your heads. I don't want anybody looking around. See, then he said, tell the people in that group, there are people here today who think you failed God. 
There are people here today saying to your heart, yeah, but Glenn, you don't know what I did. There are people in this place saying, Glenn, I've been a disappointment or not measured up. I haven't been what God wanted me to be. He said, if that's you, I want you to raise your hand. In this place, I'm saying the same thing. There are people here who believe they've not measured up to be what God wants you to be. Or you've lost your first love. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. Don't put your hands down, I see you. And then he said something, he said, Out of here. If you raise your hand, I want you to stand up. The crazy guy with the tight eye socks who just admitted to planting gemstones <laughs> is standing up here asking you, will you stand up with me? If you raise your hand, just simply stand up. <laughs> what we're going to do it right here. And he said, those people who are standing up, if you'd come and form a circle with me, and I had over 150 people, I think, come up and join hands and hold up. Actually, it was more like 300. <laughs> that stage was huge. The whole stage was covered with people. That's even up there. It's probably more done. think they haven't measured up should be here. Because God told me to tell you something. You have never fallen short of Jesus. Take each other's hands. You've never fallen short of Jesus. You've never disappointed him. You have never disappointed him. It's so wonderful. He adores you. You're his favorite over everybody. You know what God is saying to you right now? He's saying this. You me? It's so I've had a guy who to you before. Yeah, you have. His name is Jesus. <laughs> and he knew before life was started exactly what you were going to do, what you were going to say, what was going to be in your heart, and he chose you. Because I need to ask you guys to stand here in the circle and stay here for a minute if you guys do that. Just stay here in the circle for just a minute. I'm going to get out of the circle for just a minute. Because I need to talk to you guys who are not standing up. There's a group of people up here who's half this group who have, who have said in their hearts, we failed God, we've blown it, we don't believe we've measured up. i got to ask a question. What in the blank are you doing on your bus? <laughs> Why are you up here with these people telling them how much God loves them? <laughs> right now. <laughs> and if everybody in that group would just do a 180 degree circle or even come over here and Come over here. Keep your hands together. It's going to be tough, but do it anyway. It's going to be tough, but do it anyway. We get the power right through these two. These two so. Now turn around to these people who have come up to love on you and pray with you. Because they have a word for you, and that word is you've never failed God. Turn around to 